Hello, 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 all of our Motor City Solutions Facebook followers. Gwen Stacy here, live at the Motor City Solutions Hot Rod Shop in Metro Detroit, Michigan. Ding, ding. I just got my notification. Oh, wrong pocket. Here we go. Can you see it? Motor City Solutions is now live. If you are not getting your weekly notifications when Motor City goes live, be sure to go to the Motor City Solutions Facebook page and like the page. And then there is a little alert bell on the right hand side of this video. Hit that alert bell and every time we start up a live video, you'll get a little ding ding and you will be alerted. If you have not yet seen a live feed from the Hot Rod Shop, I will tell you a little bit about it. We do a weekly live feed every Friday at 3 o'clock um, at, at our 28,000 square foot hot rod shop here in Taylor. Uh, we have all classic cars here at the hot rod shop. If it's not classic, it is a performance, specialty, custom, um, anything along those lines. Uh, so what we do is we'll do a little tour around the shop. We have a few projects that we are following up on. Hi, Bill Russell. Thank you for tuning in. Uncle Bill, hey! <laughs> um, so we will follow up with the guys, see where they're at on those projects that we've been following. Check out some of the newer projects in the shop, if any have come in, um, and check out some of the ones that are leaving. Sometimes customers come in to pick up, pick up their cars. You know, it's... We never really know what's uh, gonna happen here on the live feed at three. So we just kind of roll with it and um, you are more than welcome to watch. We do post all of our live videos on our YouTube channel. So Motor City Solutions. Woo, there we go. Okay, I got my gimbal working now. Okay, so we do post all of our live videos on our YouTube channel that is Motor City Solutions. See what's going on in the back here. Dave and Scott just went on an adventure. So follow us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and um, comment below of anybody that you know that might be interested in watching the live feeds or anybody that appreciates um, the classic car industry. So uh, I'm gonna flip it around here, but first I would like to say a few quick things. Try to make it quick. Um, do 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 do. If you guys, hold on, bear with me. Okay, here we go. So if you guys don't already know, we are a big supporter of the Cruise News Magazine. Cruise News is a local magazine keeping automotive passions alive. Car shows, swap meets, auto events, everything in Michigan, I would say. Cruise News, double check me on that if I'm um, wrong. But everything in Michigan, uh, car shops, car events. So if you are interested in any of that, you've got to subscribe to the Cruise News. And you can do that here at the Hot Rod Shop or just go to cruisenewsmagazine.com. So they also send out a weekly newsletter. January, they send it out Thursday. So today's February 1st, 2019. But yesterday they sent it out and they are saying, yes, I'm reading from it. That is the newsletter that comes out. Hi, TJ. Um, okay, so there is another new car show planned for this weekend at the Devos Place in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It is the Michigan International Car Show. See info below. The CAARC, the KAARC, huge swap meet is happening this weekend also. And the auto show just ended the 27th if you guys were at the auto show let us know how you felt about it what you liked what you didn't like and also the autorama is coming up that is march 1st through 3rd we will be there a lot of our customers will be there too so it'll be super exciting so don't forget to check that out um yeah, so I'm just gonna keep it moving. Start walking around the shop here. Uh, comment below. Let me know where you where you guys are watching from. I know there's people from all over the world watching our live feeds. Hi, David Frosty. Where are you watching from? Hi, Eddie. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna switch it around, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in with us. This is Motor City Solutions, live feed at three. Woo! All right, let's see what's popping. Can I say what's popping? I don't know. I guess you can. I think this guy is here to watch me do the live feed. I'm not sure. So comment below if you guys can hear okay. And if you can't, comment below too. I'm going to have to go around the uh, pickup here. Hi, Della Cooley Fields. How are you doing? Hmm, we got a lot of viewers viewing. Comment below, you guys. Let us know where you're watching from. What's up, Jay Mills? Hi, Todd. Hello. How are you? Good. Hi, Mark. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. So, if you guys have been following the live feed, we have been following the 1967 Mustang Fastback. Shout out to Barb and Dave Hartline. Last week it was in the paint booth getting sprayed by the man himself, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson! <laughs> what was that show, Todd? Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace. I think I knew that. Yep. You know that moment when you forget and then, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it came out really good. It looks like it's um, coming along nicely. Yeah? yeah what, so what, do you, what, uh, what are you guys working on now? Right now we're wet sanding for polish, flattening out some of the feel out of it. Um, right now I think we got it in 1,500 in a lot of areas. We'll take it all the way down to three or 5,000, depending on how it's looking. Okay, so I know Mark has told us about the grit a few yep. times. So you said you're at 1,500? Yeah. And you're taking it down to? Uh, we'll probably finish off in like a 3,000 or 5,000 grit. Up to. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Hey, look, I'm learning. You already yep. know. <laughs> Very nice. So, this is Brittany Blue. Yep. So right now, from above this line up, it's 15, down it's 1,000. So, we gotta bring that up to par. The car is on a lift right now. I can get it up in the air. So, when we get it up in the air, I'll be able to work a little bit better if we ain't laying on the ground. Yeah. I know. I see you guys all the time. Like, <laughs> I'm like, get some knee pads. It is on a lift. Let's see. Oh yeah, where'd we get that? Packs a little bit now. So then packs his a lift. We'll get the rockers four foot off the ground. So so that's um, it much lot easier, easier access. Now. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you feel about the color? color Spraying it. I mean, did it did it lay out no. smooth? Was it a chant? Was it challenging with you? No, no. Everything went real easy on this one. Yeah, everybody seemed really hype about yeah. about how it turned out. Very happy with it. I like it. I know Barb and Dave are super excited. Where is Brandon? Hi, Jeff Aura. Brandon is no longer with us at MCS, but we still show love to our old painters. Brandon, this is Mr. Wilson, our new painter. <laughs> Kentucky's in the house. Hi, Kentucky. Let's see, what is this guy? I met you last week, helped out Todd with the paint on that Mustang. Hmm. Hi, David Frosty. Do you know David Frosty? Yep. Speaking of Frosty, it has been super cold in, <laughs> look at that smile. Super cold here in Metro Detroit, the polar vortex. It's actually been so cold the last couple of days that we haven't even used the paint booth because it uses so much gas. Really? Yeah, so I kind of shut down all the paint side of it. Right now, you can see. That's interesting. I didn't, I never heard that. We got all the small pieces, off pieces for this Mustang in there, so I'll spray those Monday. And that's the hood? Yeah, I got to paint the back side of the hood. Okay. I got to paint all the rest of the off pieces for it, and that's it. Then the car will be 100% done and just got a final polish. And... Assembly. Yep, Assembly. Assembly. Ready for Autorama. Yep. Woo woo. Heartline, you heard it here first. It's coming nice and smooth. We're almost done. I think he asks me like every day, is the car done? Is the car done? Yeah, I want to see it. Hi, Dan Brooks. Thanks for tuning in with us. So, how many new viewers are watching you guys? Comment below. Let me know if you've. Uh... Oh, wow. That's done, done? Done. Done, done? Yeah. Woo! Maybe, one, maybe one final blaze on it when it gets all assembled. But... Super crispy. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you? Good, just checking out the doors on the Mustang. Yeah, it came out really nice. Yeah. 
Yes, I'm coming right over for you. All right, Ted, cool. The doors look fantastic. The viewers are loving it. I'm loving it, you already know. Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Nice dirty paw print. <laughs> Dude, my, my whole thing is so dirty. Look, he has to cover it back up. Keep it nice and crispy. All right, thank you, Todd. Yep. Todd, you guys, if you're just tuning in, is our painter here at Motor City Solutions. I call him Mr. Wilson, or MacGyver, or the guy with the gun, or we could go on and on. Okay, and this is Mr. Mike Lowengruber. Hey, Mike. How you doing, Glenn? What's up? How are you? Back from California. American Speed Company. Uh, American Speed Company on behalf of Motor City Solutions. Amen, amen. I love it. Yeah. We so just, welcome back. We just got back from a fun adventure in California in sunny, warm Pomona. Mm. Me and the car didn't want to come back. <laughs> right, and the car. Uh, the car was loving it. But uh, we were just out at the Grand National Roadster Show, which is the granddaddy of them all. Yes, yes. And uh, we had a lot of fun out there. Uh, teamed up with the Roush Performance guys out of Livonia. They actually hauled the car and several of their engines. Nice. To, Shout out uh, to Roush Performance. To they were actually at Bear Jackson in Scottsdale first. And uh, from there, they drive up to Pomona for the show, which ran last weekend, January 25th to the uh, 27th. How many years have you been um, have you been going to the show, Mike? Uh, we've been going out there for 12 years now, and it's always the last week of January, and it's a great show because it's uh, in the middle of January or in the end of January yeah, in yeah, Michigan. Good time to be in Michigan, but not only because of that, it's just that these cars are uh, they're kind of in their their prime spot out here. That shows a lot of. Uh, 20s, 30s, and 40s vintage cars, so more of the hot rod era uh -huh. you know, than the muscle cars, and uh, it really shows well. So this is our display model. We don't have it painted because we want people to see the quality, the stampings, and then I always like to cycle the convertible top form and show them how that works. Yeah, show us. Uh, a, a modern day convertible. And this is a 33. This is the 33 speed. 33 steel Ford Roadster body by American Speed. Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that was every time you do that, it still surprises me. I've seen you do it so many times. It's so yeah. fast and slick. It's based on a modern day uh, C4 Corvette style platform, which we did for General Motors back in our production day. Uh, we did all the convertibles for them, and this is a very similar design. Uh, wow! I never knew that. That's uh... yeah. So, but it was a, it was a good show. It was very well attended. A lot of cars, a lot of people. Um, you know, sunny and 70 every day, so you can't beat that. And, and, uh, you know, you see a lot of uh, notorieties walking around and people that are big in the industry. And uh, we're pretty well known there, so we've kind of got a, a good spot in one of the best buildings. And yeah? It's always a lot of fun. What's, um, what is, so you said one of the best buildings. So what's what's one of the best well, buildings the, to... The way the uh, fairgrounds is, is let, uh, laid out, there's six or seven buildings, but building four is like the main building. And that's where they feature, the big event there every year is the America's Most Beautiful Roadster Award, mm -hmm. which is very similar to our Riddler Award. Our Riddler, right yeah. Around. Yeah. And so they have, uh, you know, about 14 or 15 cars that get entered into those, uh, into that competition. And a lot of those cars have a million dollars plus invested in them. They're a million? Really, yeah, they're really high-end entries. I know we teamed and, up with uh, American Speed and had a couple over 600,000. Yeah, yeah. So a million, we haven't got there yet. But that's, uh, that's a big event, and so that all those entries are in one main building, and then they have the other big vendors like Roy Brizio from San Francisco's there. He's built uh, four of our cars now, and he has about five or six new cars there every year. Wow! And so he had uh, a couple of ours there over the last few years, and he wins a lot of awards for those too. But that Amber Award is big, and so that's when I say that Building Four is kind of like the prime spot. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other buildings are are just kind of smaller vendors or uh, just. Uh, small type you know sign yeah sign it's just not the prime location like you know yeah, yeah absolutely yes. like like our like our uh, building is the prime location for the telegraph cruise right yeah right, exactly. and that's where you'll find american speed is in building four yep and you'll see uh we get customers from all over the world we get guys there from australia new zealand sweden uh, germany oh wow so, well, we have viewers from all over the world maybe some uh yeah. yeah maybe we'll have to share it to some pages see if we can get some yeah, it's a great place to be for some high high end exposure, and uh, like I said, it's a lot of fun doing it. I really enjoy doing that, and, and uh, you can't beat the weather. 
or the venue. You know, the California Mountains in the background. And, oh, wow. You know, all these music playing. Oh, I love it. You know, you already know the music. You already lot know. Lot some Frankie Valley. Yeah. Some Dion. Is it Dion? Is that how you say it? Dion and the Belmonts. Dion and the Belmonts, that's right. Okay, yeah, right? <laughs> or snow. Yeah, snow, that's it. Look at that suicide that's, door, man. That is so slick. 1933, you guys. And that's how slick and quick it is. Beautiful, Mike. All right, sir. Well, thanks, Mike. Thank that's you. Good. Glad to have you back. Good job. <laughs> See you, Mike. So if you guys don't know, we team with American Speed Company. I think it's safe to say that's one of our sister companies. <laughs> Howdy, Gordon Leslie. So it looks like the booth is closed, but ow, I wouldn't recommend knocking on that. Can we come in? Yep. Hello. Hey, I thought there was nobody. <laughs> I didn't know there's anybody in here, Mitch. How do I, can I? Push. Don't call me a winkling. <laughs> you guys, this is Steve Mitchell. He is one of our paint and body guys here at Motor City Solutions, Hot Rods and Restorations. How you doing, Mitch? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Viewers, how you doing? You guys good? Jeremy West says hi. Gordon Leslie hi. says howdy. Hey, Gordon. We know Gordon. So, wow, you've gotten a lot done on the Beetle Bug. Um, yeah, this... Uh Pitching away at it just a little, bit, little, little at a time, just uh, trying to figure out the fenders and whatnot. Last time we saw the, is it, what year is this? 72? Uh, I think it is the 72. Okay, so last time we saw the Volkswagen Beetle, it was actually in the sheet metal department. Yeah. And Johnson, I think. Ooh. So he was actually fixing this part here on the inner because it was caved in from when the fender got hit. Mm hmm. So he was pulling the body back out so that it would meet back up with the, the new fender. So, you know, now I'm fitting the fender. Uh, so all this in here was all crumbled in. So he straightened it all back out, pulled this back out. And right now I'm just fitting this edge on here because I'm going to keep this edge. Wow. What you're, what you're seeing here with the yellow and the blue, though. Yeah, yeah. What's going on with all so, these measurements? and? So if you stand in front right here, Gwen, right here? you can catch the tire hanging out. Okay, hold on. Let me get a good... Okay, yeah, yeah, we see it. So the tire's hanging out, so obviously it's gonna hit. So this is the widest fender that they offered for this actual setup. So what I'm having to do is set all this up here so I can actually cut and leave flanges to extend this by two and a quarter inches wide. Wow, oh my gosh, so I'm totally leave, custom. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave this flange here and then I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna add the blue. So that's going to be your What? Difference. That's all going to be material? Yeah, so it'll be stretched back out, which will bring the fender out to about here. Holy cow. Now, are these, okay, so silly question maybe, I don't know, but you're the expert, so I ask. So is it the tires on this particular, that the well, customer chose to put on the bug here that's making all this? Yes and no. I'm assuming because Volkswagens don't have this. Oh, uh, <laughs> might it be that, mate? <laughs> usually, usually the motor's in the back and it's a lot smaller. So since most wagons usually don't have this, I'm assuming that the front end itself is totally different, which will make it wider. Mm -hmm. So then they mounted these tires. But it was in a collision, so the front fenders are actually wider than these fenders that are available. So if you look at this part of the front fender, the original front fender, you'll see how wide oh, okay, this, this is. Okay, this is the original. You know, this is quite a big difference, you know, if you just look at it in comparison to my hand yeah. to the headlight. And then when we come over here, my hand is to the headlight. Oh, yeah. See? Wow. So where these fenders came from, I wish I knew. <laughs> um, only because they're wide enough. But more than likely, these were made to fit, you know, depending on whatever was going on with who built this. Right, right. Same thing with this. You know, they said, well, this is what we offer. You know, it should fit. Problem is, is it's a couple inches short. So right. A couple gonna, inches. So I'm going to cut it on both sides, separate the flange from the fender, add two and a quarter in there, put it back together, which is going to give me my wide body back. So what, ki so what kind of uh, material are you using? So this is going to be fiberglass. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this is fiberglass right now, steel car, fiberglass fenders. And you can see that it's a custom fit to the whole car, so the running board, the back fender is wide as well. So as it comes up this way, you know, it's just a wide body and it's chopped and slammed to the ground, you know. 
Yeah, so this is like custom all, all yeah, the way so you out. you can see how far in the tire is in the rear. Mm -hmm. It's tucked yes. way underneath versus in the front. Yes, I definitely see you what definitely you're saying here. You definitely need more room in the front because you've got turning and you got suspension. So it's going to rub, it's going to hit when you turn and so on and so forth. Now when I pull this out, this two inches, it's also going to take and fit this better as well so that it actually fits to that running board where it used to. Because in the front right here, if you come up this way, as you get to here, you'll see there's a gap. So right here, there's a gap here. Mm -hmm. So when I take this fender and I actually move it out two inches, it'll close this in. So I won't have to modify this either. So that's just the, you know, kind of better of both causes. Yeah. Just modify one thing, not a bunch uh, of stuff. Yeah, not everything. Yeah. But it looks like almost everything's kind of modified. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then we'll prep it and prime it and do the front end back in the uh, hot rod black. Um, then it has pinstripes that go on the hood that uh, are kind of like these under here. But they're in the center. Oh, I like that. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna do the pinstriping on this, of course. Yep. We you know you're our pinstriping guy. So Gordon knows too. Pinstripes, pinstripes come out around like this, and about that shape, like what I kind of drew out, just to give me an idea to look at on the wall. Nice, wearing. I like it. Oh, look here, we got a good shot of like the old there. Yeah, I gotta do that on top. Of the With the new, too. I like it. I like it. What do you guys think? Comment below. Jeremy West says, first time I've ever seen an engine in the front of front end of a VW bug. Wow. Well, Jeremy, we're going to have to go out and look at some cars there. <laughs> yeah, but this is a rarity though, right? Yep. Well, that, my yeah, gosh. Got, uh, you know, it's got spider webs going on and whatever. It's a nice little rat rod. It's something you definitely wouldn't expect. Um, definitely down, wouldn't expect that under that. All the way down to the little bug in the front here <laughs> and a little teeny tiny steering wheel they got going on. Can we check out the steering wheel? Yeah, it's the little details, right? Look at how low this is. Yeah, it's down there. Oh my gosh, can I can I can I sit in it for a second? <laughs> Trade! You know I got to, this is the best part. Holy cow, I don't even know if I can get in here. Woo! Yeah, some of us have a problem. Like I'm driving. five two and a half, okay. Some of us gotta duck our heads to get in there. Hold on, so. can I move this? Let's have some fun. Oh! Oh my gosh, look at this wood. This is real wood. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty da, nice. Da, da, da. <laughs> this is so sweet. Oh my god, look at the top. Like if you, yeah, if you spent. This, oh, would this be headliner? Yeah, well, actually, what that is is a, uh, it's a blanket. Oh no, kidding! Yeah. Holy so that's cow. an actual blanket that they've used and made little cross braces uh, out of plexiglass and uh, to support it up there. No kidding, this is so cool. Oh my God, look at the sounds in the back. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is a speaker system in the back. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Steven, I feel like if we took this to a car show, we could have some fun. <laughs> we could have some fun. Oh, you can do like... Oh, just tilt it? Yeah. Or you can use that little button. In the back? Yeah. Oh, it's not working? Yeah. You know, like that. You can move it like oh, that. There you go. Thanks, Steve. I'm like, throw it at you. Like, here, take right, the camera, yeah. Steve. Take let me, let me get the car. This <laughs> no, this is crazy. So, I feel like, you know, the steering wheel. Do I, okay, do I like look like I fit? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you fit in there pretty good, I guess. It's yeah, I mean, I feel like it'd be kind of hard to drive. <laughs> but it it's, looks so fun. Look at this. You already know this boy comes with. Look at yeah, I've had to move it around a couple times. Uh, it actually is uh, a lot different being a you know being in a Volkswagen. I drove a Volkswagen for a minute, but they never have what that's got in it. So I actually, I always like Volkswagen actually. Okay, I'm all dirty. I'm gonna get out. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> this whole thing is like customed out. I love it. Safe? You'll yep. handle that. You're the yeah, guy. Yeah. So to show you how low it is, if Gwen stands by the door, because she's not very tall. So. Five, two and a half. That's not bad. So she can she can reach almost all the way over the roof. So it's a little. I'm, I'm dirty anyway. Yeah. Okay, I got dust all over, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely slammed to the ground. It slams to the ground. Like how could you? How you go over the railroad tracks? Uh, very slow. Slowly. So yeah, they're just random repairs that are being done on the car, just to fix some of the collision and a little bit of couple dents and whatnot. I love it. I love the spider webs in the back. Yeah. This little trunk. Yeah, there's spider webs. Oh everywhere. my gosh, look at the look at the tail lights. Oh, it's got <laughs> the skull tail lights. Yeah. I love it. Oh yeah, and then it's got the big VW sticker that I got put back on the hood too. 
<laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Very cool. Little devil tail lights. Totally custom. So is this something that you would see on Autorama Extreme, like in the basement, Stephen? Yeah, usually it'll be downstairs. Something like this would be down there. On the occasion, you'll see something like this upstairs. Um, <laughs> but they kind of shun against that on occasion. So. <laughs> on occasion. Okay, cool. cool. I am going to... Got to put my water bottle in my pocket. You know what we got to do? What we got to do for the viewers. Okay. Switch. You're the best. Look at these guys come through and help me out like this. I love it. Beautiful. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep on going at this thing and try to get it all lined up. Um, then we'll go to chopping some fenders. All right, cool. So, we'll check in next week and then um, maybe we'll uh, get to see part of that, eh? Possibly. All right, Mr. Mitchell. All right, we'll see you. You guys be safe out there. Yes, yes. The viewers are, I'm seeing likes going on the screen, so they're loving it. All right, guys, we'll see you. Bye, Steven. Thank you. Do you want me to shut this? I'll get it. In your layer? I'll get it. <laughs> Bye, Steve. Okay, guys, so if you are just tuning in, we are at Motor City Solutions Hot Rods and Restorations on Friday afternoon. The guys all seem to be pretty busy. Let's check in with Mr. Josh Hoy. Comment below, let me know what you guys think. Would you rather ride in the Bug or the 57 Chevy pickup? 57. <laughs> Did you see that bug in there, the engine? Holy cow. You guys, this is Josh Hoy, our fabricator here at Motor City Solutions. Josh has been adamantly working on the 57. Holy cow. Got the grill going, got some color up there. Yep. Got the grill in, got the front bumper in. Got the hood gap. Look at all that chrome. Shiny. It looks fantastic. Isn't it amazing what some chrome will do? Yep. You know, just look completely. A little shiny goes a long way. A little bit of shiny goes a long way. Can we? Can you shut the? Oh, you probably. Yep. How's the El Camino coming along, Josh? Slow. Slow, but coming. Yep. Pat Norton is the one who asked if you know Pat. So yeah, it looks Sounds great. Familiar. You guys used to see him at Big Pat Boy. Norton have a red Mustang. Yeah, that's the one. I know. I see Hold it. Up, Pat. Hey Pat, we know who you are. Okay, so yes, got a lot of bit of shiny. Yep. Now what's this? Is this is its own? It's just the emblem. This whole piece is one. Yep. Wow. It looks great. Hey hey, he said. Pat said. So, okay, you got looks like you got the interior in as well. Not Dang, all Josh. Of it, but it's what happened to the chill spot? Yeah, now I gotta get in the truck to chill out. <laughs> the truck or uh, the seat used to be sitting right back there by Josh's toolbox. And it was the chill spot. But now it's back home. Greg, I hope you didn't mind us using the seat for the chill spot. So what do you got going on in here, sir? Well just putting some of the interior to make sure everything's jiving and fitting with everything else. I mean, other than the seat, everything's all brand new aftermarket. So just kind of going through and making sure everything's fitting and lined up. So after it's painted, we know everything's going to fit. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than taking a drill or a grinder to a car with fresh paint on it. A drill? So yeah. Yeah, that would be horrible. Fresh paint. Yep. Fresh paint and drill, they don't go together. Nope. I like it. So the owner came in today, I saw him. Yep. And what? what's the status? Is he happy? Is he excited? Oh, now, and was he bringing parts in? Did I see him bring some parts in? I saw him come with some boxes. Maybe not, maybe so. Some, some people bring parts in, some people don't. That is an option if you are getting your car fully restored. This car, this truck came to us with just a cab and a frame. Is that right, Josh? Yep. Cab, frame, and a bunch of boxes. And have you pretty much been on the uh, only one on this project thus far? Um, I would say I've been the majority worker on this. Uh, I know Jeff Johnson's done a lot of body work to this thing before. Mm -hmm. um, rocker, rocker panels, cab corners. Um, this is the only original. Is that right? The only original uh, part left? On the bed. On the bed, on the bed. Yep. Right. Um, 
I love that side step. I think Todd and Tim did a bunch of work to the firewall. Well, we know they probably will do a lot of work in the paint area too, right? Yeah. Um, but majority, I'd have to say, I've done most of the work. Yeah, we followed you um, when he first put the bed on. And I'm sure I'm probably forgetting a few things that Jeff's done and the other guys have done. I don't want to sound like I'm Oh, thinking. no. You're, we know you're not. We know you're not. We know it's a team effort there. But we saw, we've been following Josh. He put the bed on, right? Yep. Bed on the frame. And then moved to yep. gapping. Put the bed together. Exhaust. Put the front end on it. Put the exhaust on it. It actually sounds really, really good. Um, it sounds really good. Yeah. What do you mean? You get start. You got it started. Let's hear it. What are you doing? Let's hear this bad boy. What do you guys think? Comment below. Let us know. You guys want to hear it? What are you doing? Just got to put a little. It don't have the. Uh, since we're breaking it all apart later to paint it, I don't want to put fuel in the gas tank. Um, because then when they go to unhook the gas tank to paint everything, fuel's gonna go every, everywhere. So I just put a little bit of gasoline in the float bowls and uh, just let it start up for a couple seconds. Wow. Um, other than that, we should be good. Hey, hey, super smooth. Yeah. Nice, Josh. Yeah, definitely. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's like waving me out. <laughs> wow. Sounds really good. fantastic Josh can you um can we take a look at the uh the you were showing me the exhaust the other day compared to what you originally those oh. how am I saying this how am I saying this now is that what originally comes on the car you know what I no it originally probably just had a mild steel um, exhaust and how it came out of the car I had no idea this is really the first time I've ever worked on a 57 Chevy truck so a lot of this is new to me Okay. Well, you're doing great thus far. So, when the guy came in for exhaust, he was open to ideas for exhaust tips. So, what a lot of people do is they'll generally cut this back on a little bit of an angle, and they'll just do something like that. Here, let me go over here. Okay, yeah, I've definitely seen more than a few And it was just old trucks like that. At first, when I had it mocked up like that, it was just driving me nuts because it just looked out of place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of people put like the dent, or I don't want to say the dent, but the bumper has the cutouts for it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and this one don't. And then, so that I wasn't really digging. And then another way some people will do the exhaust is they'll have turn downs where they just. Oh, I kind of like that. Dump out like that. What do you guys think? Comment below. Let us know. I kind of like that. What's your thoughts? Obviously, no. So, grab this guy. Now, come over and get a side view. Okay. You know, kind of get. You're gonna have, probably have to go from the more of the ground to look up to see what's actually going on. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Look, this thing's awesome. It goes. We're all the way. So. Sometimes they'll run the exhaust and they'll just like literally have turn downs like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. So what I did is I kind of gave it a little bit of a kick down and then cut this parallel with the ground. It's perfect, I love it. You know, and every, some people are saying, oh, well, what about this? You know, this is kind of pointy. Well, it's behind the bumper. So if somebody hits it, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, they kind of have to be asked, they kind of have to be asking for it. They kind of have to be asking for it. That's I mean, perfect. You can, you can rub your leg. No hit. hit it. Beautiful, man. I love it. I actually do like the little. So what? What is there a name that for that exhaust? That type you did there? Not really. No. Custom joshed. Yeah. <laughs> I think it looks good. I love it. I think it looks really good. Comment below, you guys. Let us know what you think and how would you like your exhaust custom fit on a '57 Chevy pickup, if you had one. All right, I love it. Josh looks good. Greg is so happy. Saw him today with his Detroit cap on. He always comes proudly representing. Very good. All right, sir. Well, I guess I'll leave you back to it. One more time, you guys. This is 
Josh Hoy, our fabricator here at Motor City, and we're looking at the 57 Chevy pickup. Shout out to our customer, Greg Stanfell. I know you are so excited, and rightfully so. It's definitely coming along. And we'll check in next week with Josh to see where we're at on the full restoration. Yeah? All right. Give me some. Thanks, Josh. Take it easy. Have a good weekend, everybody. Take it easy, and you have a good weekend, too. And moving right along, look how busy everybody is. Do, 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 do. Hello, Kevin. Kevin with the E V E N. Hi, Ron Sawyer. We know you. How are you doing? Hello, Johns. Not much, man. How's it going? Can I do a. I never did. I never put the radio down, but. Just in this case. Ooh, gimbal's going crazy. So Johnson's working on the 67 Tempest. Last week we don't <laughs> don't think it. <laughs> Here we go again. And um, so last week we were you had the whole body kind of mocked up. Or, yep. Is that right? Mocked up and that it wasn't together yet because he had to fit and move and massage and. Yep. Get everything lined up. Get all the gaps right. Okay. Make sure everything's in its place. So it'll take a two, three, sometimes four days of that because there's so many parts that uh, they all got to kind of jive together. Mm -hmm. so. so where are you at now? I know when these uh, big arrows come out, yeah. that means we're welding. That, that means we're going up. That means we're going up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're, uh, we're probably about maybe 90% welded up. The whole car? Yeah. Wow, we're so we know what you were doing all week. Yeah, that was that smell. I knew I smelled. Yeah. Yeah, basically been welded for five days. So well, you welded days, out? Kinda, yeah, four days. I kind of did some other stuff a little here and there. But uh, it's all been welded and fit all the way back there. And now I'm to the last pit, the last tail panel. And it's kind of like how you have to, you can't just like weld here, then weld there, weld there. You kind of got to weld on your way out. So uh, right now I'm fitting the, the trunk, the trunk drops, what they're called, trunk drops. Mm -hmm. And for these cars, they make the same thing as, uh, as far as like a, uh, they say they're for a GTO, but they're really for uh, Chevelle, and you got to kind of cut them up and make them. Oh, really? The so they don't make they don't make perfect fit. No. Nope. No surprise there, There's right? No surprise. No, no surprise there. But, <laughs> but everything looks really good. The trunk's got really nice gaps. Everything's real nice and even. Josh had some. Can I set this here? Yeah. Josh had some weird tool. He was doing testing the gapping on the '57 earlier this week, and he was like, "Do you have one of those?" Yeah. Yeah. They, they, we actually make those. Oh, really? Yeah, really? I didn't know if that was like something that you buy at the... Well, you can buy them because they'll come in like different sizes. And if you do newer cars, you know, the newer cars, the gaps are way tighter than what are on uh, this older stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is, I made this one and it's just a 3 16 piece of steel. And uh, what happens is you want that to be, you know, to where it just drags a little bit in there. And then what happens is after you prime and you paint everything, it ends up taking up space, and then you won't be able to fit this in there. Oh wow! Yeah. So, you, but if you if you make it too tight from the beginning, and then you end up priming and painting everything, then you'll have no gaps, and you'll try to open the door or something, and end up crashing on the fender. Oh yikes! Yeah, these cars are not made to that uh, tight of tolerance, to where you can make them to where there's no gap, you know, eighth inch gaps. If you, you got an eighth inch gap, it's gonna something bad's gonna happen. Right. Yeah, it's gonna end up chipping off. So, we like to make them a little wider because we can always kind of tighten them up with material. I'm sorry, did you see my smile? We have a viewer that said, the doctor is in the house! Yep. Woo hoo! Yep. <laughs> Dr. Johnson. That's yep. funny, I love it. Yep, we're getting it done though. We, uh, we got, like I said, we got, we got probably about 80%. I'd say 80%, 85% all welded up. So when we first came and we started, a couple weeks ago, started looking at the 67 Tempest with you. Come on. Where, uh, I'm gonna, shh. <laughs> where did we? Where were we at? Where did we start with this? Uh, well, we started with basically putting the body on our own history. Okay. And um, we initially was going to put floors in the car. That was and, the first. Yeah, that was the first. But as usual, when you cut stuff apart, you end up finding, um, you know, the rockers are bad now. You know, then. Uh, oh yeah, and then yeah, we went then, into the rockers yeah, and we had the yeah. um, the clubhouse. Which I don't normally like to do rockers. Why think why the car is on a rotisserie? Because 
usually when it's on a rotisserie, basically it's bolted up at the front and on the back, and then the center of the car tends to want to sag mm -hmm. because of just the weight of the car. You mm -hmm. know, the car was never made to be to be uh, weighted like that. You know, when it sets on a frame, it sets, you know, in a multiple points. Even, yeah, evenly, you know I mean? so yeah. it doesn't do that. So normally I don't like to do rockers like that, but um, I just, to the point now where, you know, if I weld some structure in here, that's basically what this structure is in here for just to retain some original uh, dimensions on the car. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we cut so much out of this car that I really didn't care about retaining any original measurements because I cut, you know, I cut off so much out of the car that right. I'm just gonna put it back where I want it anyhow, you know, so um, some people they get a little leery about that and they gotta have all this extra bracing and stuff in here. And it's not a bad idea, you know, but, um, like I said, when you cut this much out of the car, you're gonna end up putting it where you want it anyhow. Yeah. And you actually find out how uh, imperfect these cars are in the first place. You know, when they build them from the factory back in, uh, you know, the 70s and 60s, they were really not concerned with, um, you know, everything being perfectly square and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, yeah, so we've yeah. learned, so I've learned, I yeah, should so say. Like, like I said, you, we usually end up putting them back more square than what they were born anyhow. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, uh, we just, we just cut them up and then put it back how put we want it. Put it back how we yeah. want it. Shayla yeah. Yeah, Bryant, did, thank you for tuning in. You know, I changed the world, man. I, <laughs> I like that. Wait, can we hear that one more time in front of the camera? No, no, it's got it. no, it's not. Oh my gosh, you always do that to me. So what? I liked it. So, okay, you guys, this is Jeff Johnson, and he said if you give him a welder and a cutoff wheel, he'll change the world. I like that. These guys never have no fun with me. They won't repeat. But hey, see, I got likes going on the screen. They liked it. Shayla, what do you think about that? You like that quote? She yeah, says, clean, can't. everything new, 100, 100. Yep. You can't be afraid to cut some stuff up, though. Everybody's afraid to cut some stuff up, Everybody Jones. is afraid to cut some stuff up. Except you. You, you got to just cut it up. And, like I said, I ain't never had to buy one yet. So. It's yeah, super it's clean. It's, it's over-welded as far as the welding goes. So this thing won't, you know crank the crack going up a driveway it's better to over weld than yeah. under weld right oh, yeah for sure for sure yep. yep we got the viewers are liking what they see and then did you say that we are going yep. to be I doing do the a firewall, firewall because of the rack in here but this firewall is pretty cut and dry it's uh it pretty much goes in right through here so i'm estimating me you know working on a day and a half to do the firewall wow so but i, I want to get everything else done and then basically treat it like a new job and then uh i'll cut out the firewall or a firewall and put a new one in and then I'll cut it loose from my uh, my homemade jig basically here and uh, put it on a lift and then they can put uh, the new caulking and paint underneath the car mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll set it back on the car and start piecing it all back together. I like it. Be good times. Be good times. So the next two weeks I think should be uh, pretty much rolling around here on its own uh, on its own free will. We, we so. taught it how to go yeah. on its own. Yeah. Reborn. <laughs> Reborn. Yeah. Reborn. Yeah. Reincarnated, reborn, yeah, if it was only restored. Days, when uh, you get old, you can go and get new legs parts. put on and parts put on. And, <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be ideal. Yeah, and, and through the kindness of the gentleman who owns the other GTO, mm -hmm. he allowed us to borrow his trunk. <laughs> That's to, awesome. Yeah, to fit to this car because this is a. This is this trunk is what I call unmolested, meaning it has it's never been an accident or body worked other than you know. Oh, completely change. original. Yeah, so it's completely original. So the the deck lid that he has from the original car has a bunch of rust on it, and it looks like it may have been hit or had a little accident at one time. So I didn't want to fit the car to that particular trunk because if he finds a new deck lid and it's not been hit or molested or anything then it's not going to want to fit this so, right right so anytime, oh that's smart uh, yeah any, yeah anytime you can use an original piece that's never been uh hurt or anything that's the way to go and uh so, i like it we have the best customers don't we yeah yeah i mean the guys like yeah just, go ahead use yeah, our trunk drop to exactly. to um or our trunk lid to uh fit the gt or fit the tempest yeah just take it right off my gto that's, that's <laughs> the thing about uh that's awesome car guys is uh you know, we all have a common goal, you know, we, we want to see them back on the road. One goal, right, yeah. keep them on the road, that's right. Keep them on the road, keep, I the, like keep it. the hobby alive. Keep know. the lifestyle. So he's all right with that. It uh, looks good, man. Yeah. So when will we start on the GTO over there? I don't know if you guys can see it in the uh -huh. back. 
you know, they're still like kind of in the negotiating stages with that. I okay. Know, uh, I know the guy wants to do redo all the mechanical on it. Oh, smart. Yeah, and uh, we're trying to get him to uh, to just go ahead and do the whole body and just because that's that's a you know pretty rare car. It's all original sheet metal. I don't. It's not going to need quarter panels. Wow, really? Yeah, it might need some little patches here and there, but it's not going to be like this car where we had to basically rebody the car. So uh, we're trying to get him to to do a full restoration on it. He wants to do a full restoration on it, but it's always a big decision. Yeah. So well, it's like you only do. You know, how often do you bring your car, your classic car, yeah. in for full mechanical updates? Right, you know, and right. to, so if you're doing the mechanical. It's like, you know, you only do this once in a lifetime, think, do the uh, body, get it done. Yep, I think this that car, that particular car was his uncle's car. So it's been in his family for years. I think uh, his dad owns a GTO like that. Oh, really? I think That's they both cool. his brothers went and bought like a, the same car at the same time. Oh, no and kidding. I, yeah, and I'm sure you were probably racing them around, you know. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You already know. You don't have to other. guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Each other every weekend. Absolutely. So, uh, he wants to bring it back to, uh, to, to life, you know. Yeah, so absolutely. Family heirloom. Family yep. heirloom, and that's priceless, as we know. I like it. If you guys can see the GTO over there. Yep. So yeah, this is like GTO month or three months. GTO oh, do is months. it? Well, we had uh, the other GTO. You know, they come in waves. Pontiac. Yep. And then this is Le Mans, Pontiac GTO, all the same thing. And then the, the newer this GTO right They here. really do come so, in waves. Yeah. Usually we'll get them in threes. You know, we will have three Camaros in a row. Three Every single time, it really yeah, happens three like that. Three Mustangs in a row. So. Every time. <laughs> yep. Oops. So. Sorry, I'm trying to. No, no, no. All right, gents. Well, I'll leave you to it. Yep. Thank you so much. All right, more welding. Uh, mustard gas. Is that what you say it smells like? That's what the paint is. <laughs> it burns that paint off. That's basically mustard gas. Yeah. Mmm. Have time. fun. Have fun with the mustard gas, gents. See you later. Shayla Bryant is wondering if we are going to have some stuff at Autorama. Well, 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 Miss Shayla, let me tell you about our autorama no i'm just kidding um yes we definitely will have some stuff at autorama we have three full restorations that we have done the 1970 mach 1 being one of them hey timmy Woo. how you doing over there josh is pulling in with the el camino Ricky seems to be, uh... Beating on some glass. What? I'm beating on some glass. Beating on some glass. Can I set this here? Sure. I'll be right back. What? Don't go! Hey, wait! It, wait, wait. Right no, back. I'm just playing. I'm just teasing. Looks like Josh is off the clock. Has his El Camino in the house now. What a dream job, right? These guys come in. They work on these classics all day. And then they get to punch out and bring their own classics in. Excuse all me. Right. All right, how's it going, Rick? Ooh, that light. Going all right. Going. Yeah. How about yourself. Yeah, pretty good. Are you gonna blind me? No, sorry. Is that on or off? It's off. No, it's on. Let's do a test. Okay, no, good. All right, so. What a great reflection. What a great <laughs> reflection. So we have Ricky Carpenter and Tim Hanto here. They are assembling the 1970 Mach 1 for our customer Kevin Shelton. Shout out to Kevin. Um, he probably will be watching the replay on this one. We have a viewer, Miss Shayla Bryant, is, was wondering if we have anything that will be at Autorama this year. And this is one of the three cars. We will have Ford, Chrysler, Ford, Mopar, and Chevy. Yep. Yep. So this is the Ford. It's looking fantastic. It is a full restoration done here at Motor City Solutions. The guys are working on assembly. I think last week we um, were we had just got by. Safe Light had just come by. Yep. Installed the glass. We got all the trim around the windows now. So you got all the trim around the windows now. Let's take a peek. Wow, look at that's a big back window. I feel. Yeah, we're still gonna put louvers on it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah there's louvers that go over this back window. Yeah, I love. The, I think those look really nice. We started uh, getting. Some more of the door trim in and some of the more of the door glass stuff glass runs is it all coming going in nice and smooth oh no, oh, no. i knew they were gonna say that every time <laughs> we are fighting it every way really yeah so that's common right with these classics we i feel like i hear you guys say that every single car especially with the trim why the trim now the way they make the parts now yeah they're real thin they're real cheap 
So if you but when you buy original parts, were they uh, better better made then? Oh yeah, they're, they're heavier duty. They just got a better quality to them. These ones don't have very good shine on them. Like it's not a real sh real sheen. They're looking pretty shiny from over here. What do you guys think? Comment below. Let us know if you see the shine. And, uh, yeah, it's getting together. We got the cowl panel on, which we didn't have on last week. Nice. Uh, still needs a little bit of adjustment, but it's there. Talk to us about the engine. Uh, we put an electric choke on, which is not factory, but it'll make drivability a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that way you don't have to worry about either setting the manual choke or the heat rise choke that it originally would have had. Mm -hmm. Why are uh, these little letters here, why are they, uh, what are they for and why are they sideways? Those are inspection stickers and that's just how they put them on the car. Really? Yeah, like when they left the Where's factory. that picture? Don't let me lie, you guys. I came over earlier to see how the project was coming along, and Ricky was putting the first letter B on, and I said, that's sideways, you know? And he said, that's how they did that. And I said, no kidding. So that's all original. And that's how they're doing up the Mach 1. Trying to make it nice. Trying to make it nice. Trying to make it as original as possible. Almost. Almost. With a few With upgrades, a few upgrades yeah. right? Make drivability better. Got the bumper on. Need a little bit of adjustment once we get everything else on. Uh, we got one light in. I just put the adjuster for the other side in. <laughs> so I'm gonna get that in a little bit later. Ah, uh, it's like it's blinking at us. It'll come together. It's coming together, Kevin. I know you are so excited. It has no choice. It has no choice. You fight them the whole way, they're still gonna get it done. Yep. Right? Exactly. Right. Look, we're here in the trim service area on the wall there. <laughs> Stripes going on eventually? Eventually. Eventually. We, um, I think the hood was actually um, over in the paint area. They had the stripes mocked up. Yeah, Steve was working on that. Steve is working on that, and it's going to have the matte black yep. on the top. Yep. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait for Autorama. Yeah, they're going to paint all the stripes, the uh, shaker hood and the rear spoiler all at the same time, so everything matches. Nice. And it really does matter the timing of it all, right? So if they were to do the hood and another part at different times. Yeah, I then... know humidity and temperature and all that plays with how that stuff. Is that right? Out. Yep, that's right. Tim's been painting these cars for quite a long time, and Ricky so. even knows quite a bit about painting. Yeah, I'm getting into it a little bit. He's a master yeah. mechanic here at Motor City <laughs> Solutions, but hey, he gets Coming around. Inside. He gets around. <laughs> Tim is a painter here at Motor City Solutions and body man, of course. More body man. Right, Tim? Right. We started getting some of the eight pillar trim in, which has to go in before the dash pad. Uh, we started getting some of the other windshield trim and the visors. We're waiting on Oh, the you got the clip. visors in. Yeah, we're waiting on the clip that holds them in the center. We're waiting on the rear view mirror. We're always waiting on something. We started assembling. Always waiting on something, Tim? Yep. yep. <laughs> started assembling some of the rear fold down seat. Oh, nice. So we got some of the trim in for that. Still need some minor adjustments here and there, but we have to wait till we get the quarter trim in to really adjust it right. Now, are you do are we doing the interior all all original? Yes. Yep. Nice. Yep. So it's a new headliner. Is it going to be is the leather and everything on the seats is that going to be new? It's all it's all new, but it's all vinyl. It's all Oh, okay. Original style vinyl. Nice. Like we would have had back in the day. I like it. So. I was looking at some pictures of the interiors. Um, on the, nice. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah. It looks they look very spacious, surprisingly. We will see. We will see. That's right. Looks Couple good. Weeks. Looking good. Couple weeks. So Autorama is March first through third, you guys. Yeah. If Mr. Autorama can tell you here first, ain't that right, Mr. Autorama? Yeah. I called him Mr. Autorama because he is the guy. I just call him that because. He's always like the last one to touch the car. They're doing assembly. It's like down to the wire. And who comes to save the day? Da, 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 da. Yep. I'm just kidding. They all do, of course. Yeah, they all do. <laughs> it's a team effort. It's a team effort. That's right. Team That's effort. right. Of course, of course. Which Mopar will be going to Autorama? Well, Pat, you will have to tune in next week on Motor City Solutions Live Feed at 3 if you want to find out. Ain't that right, guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hey, but thank you guys so much for tuning into our live feed at three. This is like it warmed up outside. You been outside yet? I've been outside. The polar. Well, it's warmer today. 
Yeah, it's warm it's out there warmer. right now. At least the ice is melting out there. Yeah, that polar vortex. How'd you feel about that? It's I cold. hate that cold. Michigan! Hey, yeah. but we know. We know how it is, right, Michiganders? Yeah, we know how to hang in Michigan. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're in Michigan, stay warm out there and definitely tune in next week for our live feed at 3 o'clock from the Motor City Solutions Hot Rod Shop. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week. Later. Have a good weekend. Say bye, boys. See ya.